Hi there, welcome to Prime Time. I'm Paul Orford, I'm back with Daniel, um, massive marketing guru, running your own agency now. So it's good to come and have you back on again because we want, I want to explore quite a philosophical conf, uh, idea where well, you do need an open mind for it. Okay, so some of the concepts we've discussed already, yeah. it seems like we're high, but I can guarantee you we can have a blood test. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're absolutely not. So what it is, is the death of the salesman, we wanted to call it, where salespeople are essentially going to be a thing of the past. Okay, now all the salespeople watching this now, majority of the, probably the viewers are salespeople, we're all done for, myself included, essentially, with some of the ideas that are coming up. Okay, so Daniel, if you could kind of start with deep fake, for example, how, how is this going to affect us? Okay, firstly, thanks for having us back. Uh, it's been brilliant weather as well today, <laughs> which we're lucky. Um, so deep fakes, all right, what is deep fake technology? I think we have to say that first. So deep fake technology is basically built on the premise of artificial intelligence and machine learning to alter, um, it can be anything, it can be videos, it can be um, voice recordings, it, it, it can be any sort of, not just alter, but mimic a, a human interaction in, in, in a sense. So, um, and for people who, who probably don't know, you can easily Google it by the way, there's a few deep fake videos out there, very famous people, which are um, completely untrue. It's that they, they're done using this technology and you actually think it's a real person talking, it's a real person saying these things. There's even one with Obama, if I, if I remember well, and mm. famous actors um, saying different things, which they clearly in reality hadn't said. Uh, and it's deep fake technology being used um, to actually create these videos or these um, images or these avatars uh, it, ca it can be used for for many things now how it works quite simple there's um, I'd, I'd say one primary school of thought it's um, uh, the GAN technology in machine learning, the GAN algorithm, which uh, stands for Generative Adversarial Networks. So basically you have these two pieces of code talking to each other, right, in, 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 in simple uh, form. One is there to validate, one is there to issue a statement or a question. So let's say one says one plus one equals three, mm -hmm. right? So this, the other one which is there to validate says, mm, mate, not really, mm, you're off, or one plus one equals, you know, 1.8, and they're like, okay, closer, mm -hmm. closer there. So this thing by, by, by asking all these different variants and, and questions to each other, the, the code actually learns. Um, and hence um, it, it gets incorporated into artificial intelligence. And there's another technology now which uh, is a school of thought, it's um, uh, KNN, it's K nearest neighbor, and that works in a different form, but that is actually the most interesting one to, to look out for, because that takes much less coding uh, to get the same result yeah. out of. So yeah, that's deep fakes um, in, in Okay, so with deep fakes, for example, how would this be used? You, we could uh, go on YouTube and have a look at, for example, of it like you have Trump, yep. Obama, many, many people doing it. Look, we're in version 2.0, I would say now. Easy, okay, yeah. so when, we, when we're discussing this, we're looking at 10, 15 years in the future. Correct. Okay, so what we were kind of really discussing also was um, human interaction, okay, where the if you look at it for the bottom line of a company the biggest outgoing of money is a salesperson whether Correct. they're performing or not performing um, the the ego uh, the fact they, they only work a minimum amount like with they're in the office for a certain amount of hours but the actual effort going in 20% of the sale of the sales force generate 8% of the money so okay. let's if I was a CEO or an owner of a company I said look if I could have a salesperson working 24 hours a day has no ego no commission more importantly <laughs> okay True. where can i get this technology from so i'm going to go to a deep fake company okay who can provide this now it may seem absolutely bananas to say it now but us sales we cling to the fact that we have these personal relationships but with covid and lockdowns that's all gone there's been a shift definitely to um 
human relationships in general. So we are seeing more and more things being pushed uh, to via virtual channels, obviously. A very recent, even today this morning I was actually reading um, a study uh, about uh, remote working and it's like saying that 70% of Americans right now they're, they're working remotely. Okay, so what it, you no longer have this face-to-face -face in interaction. You do have a face-to-face -face interaction, but on a virtual channel, right? Um, deep fake technology can actually come in and uh, substitute the one end of, of the one person, let's say, in this case, the salesman. Can it happen? Obviously, it can. Is the uh, basis of the technology there right now to do this? Obviously, there's a lot of examples, very good ones, actually, on the internet of, of deep fake videos that are extremely realistic. Okay, uh, so if if we're possible right now, if we're very very careful to spot the difference uh, in a real versus a deep fake uh, persona, let's say. Yeah doesn't mean we'll be able to in 10, 15 years time. Now, another area we discussed as well, and this does take quite enough mind to, to take it on, and again, you've got to look in 20 years time, we can't look at it judging from where we are now, is the, the lack of human interaction will lead to like the avatar, you know, like right. where we're in a data-driven world now. Okay, right. everything is down to the minutia, mm -hmm. the algorithm, we're, we have our own personal algorithms, what we're going to buy, etc. So, I, for an example, would sell my voice, my image, etc. And you, if you were Daniel Inc., would say, okay, your avatar works best in Leicester. <laughs> Something like that for whatever reason, I don't yeah. know. You know? Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. So if I was a company owner, I'd look, look through a catalogue to say, here's my brand, and then the avatar, owner of Avatar Inc. says, okay, this is what you need, X, Y, Z. Correct. Okay, because the, 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 all right, I'm not saying that 100% sales people will go on a personal level, much like when we discussed earlier, you still have record players for sale, you know, but they'll become antiquated. You know, I, I think... How do you antiquate a real life sales thing? <laughs> well, no, look, it's... In a sense. Well, look, like, here's the thing. Sales, if you, let's go through the chronology of it. Start, not say start off there, go from door to door sales. Okay. Okay, knocking on a door, would you like to buy some stuff for your house? Okay, okay. very labor intensive. Then it got improved with telephone. Correct. Okay, then we could do so a mass amount of numbers. Technology. Yeah, exactly. like then we got more then and more reduced. Calls, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's getting more and more, the human interaction is reducing. I'm not saying all human interaction is going to end. No. But it's lessening all the time. And then the more, like, we've taken on the fact that if someone calls me on the telephone, it's acceptable to a large extent if I've said yes to take the call. Correct. Okay. When, if I had said to somebody in the 1930s, I'm going to sell you uh, a million dollar product over the telephone about meeting you, I'd have been in a lunatic asylum. Correct. But our, the, our culture, our psychology changes to accept the new technology. Don't mm -hmm. think of it as me and you now, think of it as our children and their children. I, th I think we said this also in previous episodes, but I, I do believe we're at the cusp of, I won't call it, it is an evolutionary leap in some sorts, but it's a little bit of a twisted term to use because as physiologically as humans, we will not, you know, we're not going to grow web. No, 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 no. fingers all of a sudden so evolutionary wise we haven't really changed in thousands thousand of years our cognitive abilities haven't changed much either you know the, our brain works the same way it was working during the industrial revolution so we do not evolve physiologically so quickly what uh, what it's in it's a form of augmented evolution whereby we bring in technology to uh, better things or to create better um, version let's say of our existence what we think is a better version so going back to deep fakes and the salesman and I see two things possibly happening one one way is yes you will get a lot of um, salespeople in a lot of sectors will need to reinvent themselves mm. um, if with the advent of this sort of technology yes you could theoretically and quite applicably 
um, substitute a real life salesman. And obviously, the the the, um, the uh, positives for any company will be, you know, enormously outweigh mm. the benefits for it. Would would enormously outweigh the 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 by actually applying this technology down because you cut on costs, yeah. you cut on yeah, a lot of things, welfare, yeah. HRs, benefits, forget about all that. It's just a machine doing the work uh, for you. At the same time, I want to kind of reverse it from the receiving end of things. So, if you're a customer, right, and you are now adept 15 years down the line to making your business with virtual people, right? Will that affect our behavior in any sense as humans? Will that affect our ability to interact as we do today socially as a species? I'm a bit worried. I am a bit concerned to that because of the fact that, I, that we all know that we do not evolve so quickly physiologically i mean look at the uh, look at um, the quarantine coronavirus happening right now so a lot of people are indoors a lot of people are um, uh, you know using digital means to go about their business if you lock down um, even worse for you because you know depression rates are spiking yeah. and they're spiking because of this very very simple and primal reason we have not evolved as a species of solitude right so and that is a little bit of a concern to me but how can that be um, balanced I don't know regulation perhaps um, there's ethical concerns there's moral concerns and you have these concerns with any technology that comes along you even had it with the Industrial Revolution you know so um, should we stop it no uh, should we be more kind of moral about it i think yes um, is it possible that this technology will come and will serve this particular purpose of substituting some form of human interaction whether it's selling or whether it's providing legal advice for example something yes it's quite possible it's quite possible because the technology is there it's available and it's not stopping for anyone no. right now it is possible, but I think we should also voice these kind of moral and, and ethical concerns because um, uh, as a species, we we feel as if we're moving too fast at some points, right? Um, uh, but uh, again, I don't think we are. Um, I think we're moving just at the, at the regular pace of things that technology, or, uh, our evolution of technology allows us. Um, it will feel faster as we go on through through the years, except if there's this you know massive breakdown of societies and yeah. and everywhere. But it's it's not going to stop. So w where it becomes important for us is just to take a step back while we're applying these technologies to be morally and ethically correct but also if you're in that uh, if you're a, a, a person practicing um, possibly jobs that this technology will take over you should be well aware of it from now um, in the least to either take advantage of it or to reinvent yourself well that's the thing it's like anything is it if you can reinvent yourself or update your skills as well like we kind of covered as well it's not to say that you can't sell your image you know like Correct. and um you can charge royalties for yeah. it mm. you can be you know the the author of tomorrow is the salesperson of today let's say and you put out your voice you put out your yeah. your knowledge your experience yeah. uh you sell it off basically for royalties you sell off your best closing line let's mm. say of a uh, of a deal or or the closing triggers let's say your yeah. knowledge in 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 sense or it can be anything it can be your face, if, your if for example well, that, that proves the point with regards to people's image of salespeople. We're actually good ones, or reasonably good ones, and very knowledgeable about the subject. So they're really selling their knowledge. Correct. Because like, if I'm going to buy something from someone, I want to buy it from somebody who knows what they're talking about. Is it ethical? So you'd have kind of uh, like a computer game almost. It's, it's gamified. 
you know where like ethics of the person you know you can yeah. see like <laughs> previous <laughs> reviews of dealing with him Loose you know morality yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. well would, like you Think say that both. right because like there may be some industries who like people to play a little bit fast and loose correct, correct you know there may be some people who like to keep it very rigid yeah. how you look how you put like you're you're a voiceover artist essentially you yeah. know i mean look voiceover artist is a good point they sell chocolate bars on adverts on TV. You know, you get a, an it's actor to do it. Platforms now, uh, like voiceover. Let's take mm. that as an example. There are already existing platforms. I think Voice Bunny, yeah. for example, is, is a very well-known platform. You just go and uh, hire uh, a voice over actor or actress from. I don't know how many nationalities and languages and different age groups as well. So you can get your 20 year old, uh, you know, uh, southern English accent uh, to sell your chocolates, you know, or your 45 year old uh, Spanish speaker mainland Spain, because South America is yeah. different forms, you know, different accent that they use to sell insurance, you know. So you do have that even today. Um, so it's, again, Go, going back to that, it's how you will in reinvent yourself. Like yeah. the good salesperson, I don't think of the experienced one. I do not think that they will die. They will be able to reinvent themselves within this ecosystem, uh, the, the new order of things. But um, yes, a lot of bad salespeople, I guess, will need to do something else. Listen, I, I think we should come back to this at some point. It's, it doesn't have to be as dystopian as the title suggests. You know, you, if you Maybe. have to evolve. It, it, oh, look, I don't think, I would like to think that no human being in, in, in some form of crisis will just sit back, arms crossed and say, well, I've got, I can't do anything. You know, I just stop living or, yeah. or stop trying. So I think you know, humans are, well, some more than others, obviously, um, immensely resilient. Come the apocalypse, I think there'll be two people who will survive, cockroaches and salespeople. Because salespeople, <laughs> we've got to sell an idea <laughs> to people we to... Uh, well, when they do, they do. Look, everybody people. says in society, we hate politicians, they're salespeople. Hate estate agents, real estate. But, you know, like when yeah. they do the list. We use car sales. Yeah, it's <laughs> only because they've had a bad experience, you True. know. But True. if you use the avatar system, they won't have a bad Yeah, experience. well, in theory, it depends what they're buying. Yeah. You know, or it depends the budget of the guy. If the guy's got no budget, he's buying the cheap avatar of the guy who just lies to your face. You know? As I said, it, it, look, the technology is 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 there. Mm. It, it's it's still in the early days, but even the early examples are quite significant. Yeah. You know, they they you know that it's going places that that technology. Um, at the same time, again, as anything in human culture, it can be used for good. Yeah. It can be used for bad. Mm -hmm. All right, and it's already government's fear that it can be used. Imagine a deep fake video, and I, I read this article somewhere of of Trump coming out today uh, saying that I've just fired um, you know nuclear missiles to Russia and this goes on on the internet and within one hour it becomes it gets two and a half million views yeah kind of semi-viral mm. let's say within the hour those two and a half million people for I don't know for what expanse of time will sit there believing that Trump just actually fired yeah, nuclear yeah. missiles to Russia yeah. right um, and that's <laughs> I, I, I kind of you know that should concern us immensely yeah. that sort of usage of the technology if it's going to be used for avatars or for improving um, the sales experience or actually I would I would rephrase that improving the decision making experience yeah. of users uh, then yes, but if it does it in a morally and ethically yeah. correct and honest manner, you know. All right, um, mate. Well, let's wrap it up there. Um, yeah, it's given me a lot of food for thought. Actually, I think I'm probably going to get some voiceover work at the sex robot factory. <laughs> <laughs> but you do know that the porn industry is one of the first ones, as well, always, for sure, early for sure, adopters for sure. which are so, look, embracing this anybody technology. Anybody who wants to do it. Um, yeah, man, I'm sure there's a way. I'm sure there's a huge market for it. Voiceover yeah. work for sex robots. But yeah. uh, Daniel, look down the camera. Tell them how to get a hold of you at Splendid Agency. Just look us up. It's splendid.agency. Very easy to remember. We're always up for a chat and a cup of coffee. And uh, yeah, it's very easy to get hold of us. All right, cheers. I'm going to keep a chin up. It's not as bad as it seems. Um, no, it's not. We'll always need a salesperson. <laughs> See ya. Bye.